This is the exam room brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Be sure to give the show a follow on Twitter at PCRM and go on Facebook. Like us there, PCRM.org. Give that a search and you will find the show as well. Hi, I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. Happy New Year to you. I'm joined. I'm excited. You usually don't get a chance to join me for the full show, but I'm sitting across from Dr. Barnard right now. How are you, man? How's the new I'm year? I'm doing great. How are you, Chuck? Uh, man, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. You know, this is, we've got a brand new blue studio like we're really doing some fun things here <laughs> we are and i'm so thrilled that we're doing this together I, I man you know this is just it really is a dream come true for me to be able to do this and kind of merge my media and health worlds together like this is this is just such a phenomenal opportunity so thank you and and thank you to uh dania depa for for making this happen a little behind the scenes thank yous here uh, well it's we two-way going. street i gotta tell you because it, it's great to have research studies and have uh, find out the truth about diets and so forth. But if nobody ever hears about it, that's no good. So that's why we need to, to partner medical science with a big megaphone to get the word out there. So I wanted to share my story with you. I know you know that I lost 265 pounds, but I love telling people how I did that, and hopefully it inspires other people to follow suit. Like Absolutely. Nothing makes me happier than for somebody to come up to me and say, you're such an inspiration, and, you know, you convinced me to go on, you know, a diet, and I've, you know, dropped all this weight, and I've never felt better. Like, to me, that is the best feeling in the world. So hopefully today we can do uh, more of that. So at my heaviest, yeah, I was 420 pounds, and I'm 5'6 on a good day on a good day. So that's like a 66 inch waist. That's a size 6L shirt, um, 6XL. And I, was, I wasn't I was even 30. I was like 26 years old when I got to my heaviest and I could already feel my chest tighten when I walked, like literally Dr. Barnard, just across the street, um, profusely sweating, had to stop. And I just, I didn't feel good and I didn't feel good about myself. Um, physically mentally like none of that was good but i was so woefully addicted to food and i know that that's something that you've studied quite a bit you know the sad diet the standard american diet it just so addictive and i remember there were nights i would try to lose weight and i would be on this diet i'd be going really well and then i would just lose it i would get angry like i was detoxing and i would sneak out in the middle of the night and i would go to taco bell and I would load up on like $20 worth of food, and it was probably like 4,500 calories in one shot. And that was my cycle. That was my cycle every day. I think I tallied it up. I was eating somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 calories a day. Like I was going to die. And Amazing. Yeah. And I got, I got desperate. Um, so what, what, what age did this start? I was always overweight. Yeah. I mean, I was introduced to unhealthy food. Jeez. Uh, I mean, what am I earliest memories was going through the drive through at Burger King and, and getting a double cheeseburger ketchup only. Um, and I mean, that was, that was just it. You know, I, I love my mother, single mother, you know, worked and you just had to do what was quick. And my grandma who, you know, helped raise my brother and I as well. She didn't really know much about healthy living back then either, nor did my dad when we saw him. So kind of, kind of fighting an uphill battle there a little bit. And, uh, you grow up and you just you get used to that and your body starts craving that and and you just get addictive and so over the years you know i just got progressively heavier and heavier and heavier i was almost 300 pounds when i graduated from high school and then you know get up 10 years later and and you know there i am at 420 so i needed to make a change and i made this radical decision to have weight loss surgery at that time i knew nothing about plant-based living. I knew absolutely zero about it. Vegan was kind of a buzzword that I just, I could never see myself going that route. I was, you know, such a meat and dairy guy. And, but a funny thing happened, you know, years after the surgery, I, I kind of stumbled upon the physician's committee, the best thing that ever happened to me. But you go through this procedure and you come out on the other side and you feel like you've been hit by a truck. And you can go one of two ways then. You can either treat it like you have every other diet that got you there, and you can go back to your old ways, or you can radically change your lifestyle. That's what you need to do. The sad part about this is so many people have this surgery, and they go right back 
to what it was that they were doing. My father in particular, I love him to death. He had this procedure, lost a, an enormous amount of weight. But I remember it was just a month or two after his surgery that he was back at Taco Bell. And I asked him, I was still overweight at this point, what in the world are you doing? And he said, it's just easier for me to do this. And I was like, and I knew right then he was going to be in trouble. And he ended up putting the weight back on. He did. He did. I love him to death. He's he's still around. Um, put about 85% of it back on. You know, so many people have the idea that if they have weight loss surgery, that's it. You've, you've solved the problem. You've removed all the weight. Um, but it can be devastating to find what actually does happen to so many people is that weight starts coming back. Um, and all of the... Uh, all of the results of the surgery are really lost. Yeah, it, it, it becomes just like any other diet. You know, people assume that their stomach is always, you know, can just hold four ounces, you know, the size of the thumb, but it doesn't, you know, there's the, the stomach is very much elastic and it expands back out. And if you're not careful, you can absolutely put all of that weight back on and more. Um, I, I did not want to do that. And there's this period in there where for that first couple of months where you can't physically tolerate those foods or you will get violently ill. And that is not a pleasant experience. Um, so I detoxed off of that. Like it was a literal detox. And there were nights when I would just be in cold sweats and just like angry because I wasn't able to get my fix anymore, you know? Um, and I remember watching, this is so funny, watching VH1 and, and Dr. Drew's Celebrity Rehab and seeing what those guys were going through. And I was like, I can really identify with a lot of what's going on here. And that's when it kind of dawned on me. I was like, okay, well, maybe addiction is addiction is addiction. And your brain kind of treats that stuff the same way. Am I correct? Like, they're, the same pleasure centers get, get triggered, whether it's food or narcotic or alcohol. Yeah. yeah. In fact, in brain scanning studies, you can you can look at what's happening in the brain and the reward center is where you're focusing on the dopamine is released. And that's true for alcohol. It's true for every every drug of abuse, true for cocaine, true for heroin, true for cigarettes. Right. Um, but also true not for a strawberry or a peach or a little celery or something <laughs> like that. It's um, it's really two things. It's it's number one, just physically overeating mm -hmm. will do it. Um, and I don't know if it's the stretch receptors of the stomach or something like that, but overeating seems to do it. And also what I'm going to call junk foods will do it. The cheese, the chocolate, um, those things will, will cause the, the very same brain centers to light up the same centers as for, for illegal drugs. It's fascinating to me. So the component there, nutrition, I felt like I, I got a handle on. And of course, exercise was was another big thing but i remember you know every failed diet that i had done before what's the first thing people do they go out i'm gonna lose weight i'm gonna get this gym membership and they go to the gym faithfully for three weeks four weeks maybe two months and then they stop going to the gym it's just the combination for so many for a failed diet i didn't do that this time i said i'm gonna do everything differently so i just decided i was gonna walk and like I said before, the first thing, I could barely walk across the street, but I did. And then I walked around the block, and then it became two blocks and three blocks and then a mile. Eventually, it built up to where I was walking five miles every day on my lunch break. And God bless the people I was working for at the time. They gave me an extended lunch break just so I could get in those five miles. Like, they were on board with the Chuck Carroll weight loss program. Yeah. And, um, of course, I had to make up that extra half hour on the back end of the day, but that's okay. That is great. And, you know, didn't require a gym, and that made it so much easier for me. And I think that that was a big part of my success. And, and now, like, that's still 90% of my exercise program is just getting everything built into my day. It's the little things, you know, stairs, not the elevator, you know, walk, you know, use the bathroom on a different floor. Like, such simple things like that that when you're overweight, you completely dismiss. But I think, you know, as a physician, I mean, you, you have to see some, some value in doing things like that? Um, as a physician, yes, but I got to tell you something. When I was, uh, between my junior and senior year of college, I was a taxi driver in Boston. And while I was behind the wheel, I discovered something. You're moving around all day, but your body isn't moving at all. And that was the first experience I ever had with the, kind of the reverse of what you're saying. You are strapped in, absolutely immobile for maybe eight or nine hours. And even though I was young and relatively fit, I could feel the effects of being just absolutely immobile. And I started to, to think, okay, 
even, you know, not necessarily going to the gym and running flat out for five miles. I'm talking about just walking and getting out and doing things so that your body can burn a few calories yeah. here or there. So, yeah, no, yeah, as a physician, yes. But I think that you can really experience this for yourself very easily. And how many people are at their desk all day long doing this? The exercise is in their, in their fingertips and nowadays in the thumbs. Right. Right. <laughs> We're all thumb warriors. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's just the simple things like that that make all the difference. And one of the things that keeps me motivated the most is one particular memory. And it's it's kind of a downer. Um, and that is what I called the walk of shame. Shortly before I had the surgery, I w- had to attend a conference on the West Coast in San Francisco. And you're 420 pounds. Obviously, you're not going to be able to fit into the airplane seat without a seatbelt extender. And, you know, humbly embarrassed, you ask for that as you board the plane. And then you see the stares from everybody that's already on there. And they're just thinking, please, oh, please don't let this guy sit next to you, sit next to me. And I understood their position, but that was devastating emotionally. And I consider myself a macho guy. I have no problem telling you it was devastating. So I sympathize with everybody that is severely overweight because I guarantee they've had at least one experience like that. And so I think that it's important that you think back to those times. Don't dwell on them, but you think back to it, and that kind of keeps you also on the straight and narrow a little bit. I never want to relive that. No, yeah, not in a million years. And I don't wish that on my worst enemy. But now, when did you go to a vegan diet? Uh, it was actually, it was actually um, about seven, six, six or seven years after um, the surgery. Um, the funny thing is, was not vegan. And I was hosting a radio show with a Washington Redskins player at the time and wound up doing a, a PSA campaign. Uh, with you guys and that was the first time i learned about the physicians committee i was thrilled to be able to go talk on capitol hill like that was awesome so then i started studying up and then um (laughs) and so uh then what really pushed me over the edge was i did an interview with uh, a professional wrestler who is 100 percent plant-based a guy by the name of austin aries and uh, he was telling me you know what to read what to watch you know just study up and i was like where has this been my whole life (laughs) And I yeah. went and I thought I was healthy after losing the weight. No. I mean, now I'm just like, I'm in overdrive. Like, I'm shooting to live to 100. Like, I just feel so yeah. great. My mood changed. Physically, I feel phenomenal. Like, I'm, I'm just the most optimistic guy in the world now. It's, yeah. it's great. It's absolutely great. There's something in that asparagus, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Love the asparagus. Way better than Prozac. There, there, yeah, there, there's something in there. So. Well, fantastic. What, what an amazing success. Thank you. You know, you know because i got to say, it's, you, you talked about what you said, the, the, get going on the airplane and feeling terrible and never wanting to, to relive that. Mm-mm. But you must have the opposite experience now where people see you now and what you have achieved. Um, because it's, it's a physical achievement. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's also a psychological achievement. It's your arm wrestling with something um, that had, if I can put it this way, kind of got the better, the better of you before. Sure. And um, that's fabulous for you and 10 times as fabulous for all the other people who hear what you have done and think, Chuck, you're giving that to me. They're thinking that they can do that. That's all I want to do. So good on you, man. Pay it forward. All right, stick around. Uh, You and I, we have much to discuss. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to go over all the health benefits of going vegan. I've experienced some of these. But you're going to break it down as the doctor. You are listening to the, uh, the exam room brought to you by the Physicians Committee.